as, as individuals, he still stays within the parameters that are set down by the Word of God. In other words, he's not going to extend somebody to do a privilege that is beyond what has been revealed and what has been written. He will deal directly with the person as determined by God's Word. Keeping that in mind, the very first scripture that comes to my mind is Romans, the fifth chapter, the very first verse. Therefore, being justified by faith, what? We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Wow. A peace that passes all understanding, as both the Philippians brings out. A peace that gives us the joy of knowing that we have made our peace with God, and having made our peace with God, we are one with God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Man, you talk about an expression. I, I enjoy walking through this life knowing that I am at peace with God, don't you? Don't you? And what a great privilege it is for us as Christians to be able to have that peace and to know that God's love has granted that peace. That while we were enemies with Jesus, Christ, Christ died for us. When we were friends of the world, we were the enemies of, enemies of Jesus Christ. But now we have made our peace. And no matter what happens. Though this world can be destroyed and the things around us tremble and everything else, we have found that peace that passes understanding and gives us a strength to live with Jesus. Experiencing God's love brings peace. Experience God's love brings up I, I have no condemnation. I want to read from Romans the 8th chapter beginning with the first verse There is therefore now no, no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but of the spirit Now I am not speaking of once in grace. I, I put that in the notes there specifically because I wanted it clear there is the possibility that we might fall from the grace of God through our own volition, our own will. And I, I want you to also know that when we are justified by faith and we have made our right with God, as long as we as Christians stay with God's will, we can rely upon the salvation that God has promised. What a blessing. God's love helps us to know there's no condemnation. Several years ago, when I was preaching down in Portland, Kentucky, the man has since gone on to his reward, but there was a man down there that ran a shoe store. Ruth helped with pick and pay. Is it pick and pay? Boy, he had the talent. He could have been a constant organist or pianist if he wanted to be. And I, I finally talked to him coming to the church and putting his membership in the church because he had such a talent. I used to love to listen to him play the piano. But when I first started to talk to him, he says, well, he says, I want you to know I'm going to hell. And I said, why? Why, Jeff? Why are you going to hell? He says, because I had a preacher tell me one time if I have one unforgiven sin, that there was no hope for eternity. It took me a long time, but I think I finally convinced him to realize that God's love and God's grace is to the point that it extends even to those sins that we cannot remember that we did. What a wonderful God that is. Going on, we find that if I am a Christian, the experience of God's love is the fact I will not sin. Romans the sixth chapter, verses 12 through 14. Let not sin, therefore, after we've been baptized, says, let not therefore sin reign in your mortal bodies, that you have made it in the lust of wrong. Neither you yield you, your members as instruments of righteousness unto sin, but yield yourself unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God, for sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under, under grace, that we will not continue in the sins of this world. 
And I think this is a joy. I, I don't know how many times in my ministry I've talked to people that have sinned. And that sin becomes a canker to the soul, a, a cancer that eats away their very spiritual life. May I share with you an experience I had shortly after I <coughs> went to the city of Corpus. Had a young lady call me on the phone and says, I'm a member of your church. I don't even want to tell you my name. He said, but I'm going to kill myself. I need to talk to a preacher. And I said, when do you want to talk? She said, well, right now. I said, well, I'll drive up to church and we can meet up there. In fact, if I remember correctly, my wife and Ruth had not even moved to the city yet. Ruth was still in high school at the time. And we got up there, and I, I had said, Tom, I looked at her and said, Young lady, what's the problem? She says, I was pregnant and I had an abortion. She said, I, I, I feel that my baby would have been born this week if I had not had that abortion. Since my baby could not live, I don't deserve to live either. I'm going to kill myself. We had a long talk. To make matters short, we knelt down in front of the church and we had prayer, just she and I. I had prayer for her and then she broke down and cried and had her own prayer. She was a member of one of the Baptist churches in town. I was kind of hoping she would come to our church, but she did not. But she made herself right with God at that time and committed herself not to sin. It was several years after that. I went to the graduation service of one of the boys in our church, Steve, Steve uh, Curry was his name. I happened to see this young lady walking down the floor in front of me. And the very first thing she did was she looked up and saw me sitting there. She held up both thumbs. In other words, everything was okay. And that's the only conversation, if that's a conversation, I had with her. Isn't it wonderful to know that we can overcome sin? That the effects of sin in our life have no effect on us because God's love is experienced in our hearts and lives. I'm looking at that at time. As Christian people, Experiencing God's love. We press for the mark of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. You know, I, I'm going to make a comment here. And I want you to understand exactly what I'm saying. And this comes from my heart. Even if Christianity were proven wrong. And it cannot be proven wrong that way. Even if it were to be proven wrong, I'd still be a Christian. Because it encourages people to live above the darkness of this world, the sin of this world, the corruption of this world. I think that is one of the reasons, the greatest proofs that Christianity is true because we are able to live above sin, able to live above corruption, able to live above the temptations of this world. The temptation, we can overcome temptation through the power of the Holy Spirit within our hearts and our lives. Oh, I can go on and on. I have other scriptures down there that you might want to look at. Soul winning. God's control. All things work together for good to them that love God. Boy, when everything seems to be going wrong. Everything seems to be going wrong. We remember that verse of scripture. All things work together for good to them that love God. So then they're called according to his purpose. Doesn't mean that bad things aren't going to happen. But God can use the bad things to bring about good. I didn't ask my daughter for this, but I'm going to say it anyway. I am real proud of my daughter, Ruth. I don't know how many of you happen to know she has an incurable disease called Crohn's disease. I've seen her in the emergency room tripled up in pain with her head down between her knees and her heels and her buttocks just because of the pain. She has become an excellent 
counselor to others simply because she knows the problems of overcoming physical addiction and problems. She uses her Crohn's disease to be able to help others overcome addiction to drugs and alcohol. God can use the hardships of our life to help others. The chapter book of Romans ends with one of the most beautiful passages of Scripture. And in that passage of Scripture, there is one verse of Scripture that really rings out really brings up in my mind we are more than conquerors through him that loved us we no matter what happens in our life no matter what we deal with we are conquerors because god loves us what a thrill what an excitement this is how i approach sharing back in college school pennsylvania we ought to excite ourselves with serving Jesus because that is part of the life that God gives to us through Him. And He gives us life. He gives us abundantly. We're going to be singing our song of invitation. Singing our song of invitation. Is there one here that needs to devote themselves to the service of Jesus? To give himself over through their faith, belief, confession, baptism, immersion, and their missionary proceedings. We invite you to come as we stand as we sing. What is our invitation? Just as I am.